Margaret. Okay, today we have the pleasure of talking to Julio Macat, the cinematographer for Daddy's Home Part 2. Now, uh, families love this film. Were you happy to be working on this film? Very happy to be working on this film. It's, it's a really good comedy, you know, and it's rare that, that you get an ensemble of actors of the caliber of these actors and, um, and a good script, which was uh, written by... Sean Anders and John Morris, and um, it's it's like everybody is playing at a very high level in this movie. Now you're the cinematographer. Can you tell us a little bit what you're responsible for? Yes, yes. We like to think that without us, it's just black. <laughs> we uh, the cinematographer is responsible for for um, the three components that we have to our disposal is the lighting, which is really important, which sets the mood. We have the composition of the camera, which frames up the shots, you know, and the camera movement, which helps to tell the story, create pace, and move the story along. So we use all, the, all those three things. And in a comedy, it's important to be able to put the camera in the right place when you're trying to evoke a laugh and, and, and have the moment be right. Uh, this movie is hopefully in the vein of, of a classic Christmas movie. So uh, I'm actually stealing from myself because the very first movie that I photographed was Home Alone. And uh, there are parts of this movie that are actually with that flavor of, you know, families getting together for Christmas and everything is seemingly going well until the the dads descend upon the family and create havoc. So then you have these amazing actors, uh, John Lithgow and Mel Gibson and Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg, uh, just interacting with each other and creating these great situations that are really fun. Now I read that the director was very nervous about Mel Gibson because he is a, a, a director. So was the crew nervous? Were you nervous? You know, I, I don't know about nervous. Uh, we we were all just wondering what would it, what it would be like, you know, to work with someone who's obviously very talented and has his act together. So it just made us all have our act together. And I love the fact that at the end of the movie, when we wrapped and everybody was saying goodbye, Mel Gibson came up to us and said, you know, I didn't know what to expect, you know, doing a film like this, that it's like sort of a lighter, fair, comedic film. But he said, I want to tell you that everybody was super professional. And I had to, I, I, he said, I saw no ego on the set. So I had to check my ego as well. And, and it was a really great experience for, for him. Um, my favorite moment of the movie was when, when we were doing, there's a sequence where Mel um, gets nicked in the arm and falls back. And people think, oh, is he dead? And the whole family comes around, and we needed to do a point of view scene where we were down on the ground looking up towards the family coming to help them. And and I just I, I had one of my assistants put a camera together, and I said, just give me that camera. And I said, Mel, you don't mind doing this shot, do you? So I gave it to him. He held the camera, and he really got into it, where he uh, he was actually reaching up and like using his own hand and operating the shot. And I think from that moment on. We, we all knew that we, we, know, we know the thing. So I think he respected the professionalism of everybody and, and I think he did a tremendous job, actually. That's a great story. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to know, is lighting comedies different than other genres? I mean, because it's, you're, you're going for the laughs versus a mood, right? You know, lighting-wise, not so much, and especially with my approach, I detest comedies that are overlit. And I take pride in ever... From the beginning, from doing Home Alone, I, I like to have my comedies grounded into what's realistic. There's an old adage that, you know, because it's a comedy, it needs to be brighter, and that just, I don't believe that at all. I don't think that that's true. And in fact, I think in reverse, if you ground the moment and you make it realistic and you make it pretty, um, that's what really works, I think, in comedy. It, it helps the comedic timing of it. Shot selection is another thing. That's something I've, after doing so many, I've picked up 
you know, some some things about the camera where certain frames, even though they're similar, one is actually funnier than the other. And that's where I think my experience can come in and say, hey, you know, show the director the shot and say, what do you think about this, you know? And, you know, closer, wider, instead of further, similar, something that just feels funnier for some reason. And we we respect each other like that, and, and, uh, and it's a great collaborating effort. Now, do you work, um, like, old school with the, you're sitting on uh, a rig, or do you do steady cam or a mixture of both? I use everything. Uh, I love to operate the camera myself, but usually in a comedy, there's at least two cameras working all the time, and I like to add a third to that sort of dissects the scene and finds the details that are thematic to to the moment, and it's usually the shots that the editor uses at the beginning of the sequence, or uh, sometimes there's just stuff that's going to happen with actors like, 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 uh, Wahlberg and Will Ferrell, especially, who does variations on every take. Things are going to happen where it's only going to happen once. So you need to cover yourself and cover the editor with multiple cameras. So I oftentimes I take the third camera and I do the action stuff because I love it so much. Um, but most of the times I'm watching all three cameras and just making sure that that you know everybody got the shot properly. Now, we got to ask, actors have their best side, and they always, want, they always want to be lit very well. And you're married to actress Elizabeth Perkins, so we hear you know all about that. And who, gets, who gives the most requests? Yeah. Actors, actresses? You know, um, uh, it's interesting. You would be amazed at the little ego that somebody like John Wal that um, Mark Wahlberg has or John Lithgow, who's in this movie, um, I never once had one of them wondering or complaining about where the camera was placed or whether or not they were going to look good. That's something that when we start, you know, we do a little film test where everybody gets to know each other and I play around with lights and I see sort of what works best on everybody and as soon as they see that you're looking out for them and, and that, you know, there's a safety net there and, and there's that respect. Uh, Actors, uh, these guys just never brought it up. They depended on it, on, on me doing the photography. And, and later, if there's imperfections or things that we couldn't fix with lighting or filtration, which I, I like to use a lot of filters, um, then we fix it after the fact. And they know that I'm not going to let that go. And uh, so there's that uh, safety net, and we don't even think about that. Wahlberg said to me at one time, you know, I said, uh, are, are you okay with this or this, pointing out an imperfection? And he says to me, hey, man, I want to age gracefully. <laughs> so, <laughs> he sent me away. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, well, thank you. Thanks for, uh, for being a Latino representing behind the scenes. Oh, uh, yeah. I, and I really, you know, I really hope that people go see the movie because it's fun. It's every bit as fun as the first one. And, and it's the perfect family movie to go. It gets you in the mood for Christmas. There's a really beautiful m moment at the end of the movie that's going to bring, you know, everybody kind of together in a cool way. So I hope the people go see it because it's, it's really good.